Hello friends, and welcome back to the Endless Academy. In this guide, I will be going over more detailed faction strategy, as well as some general game settings and what they mean. Now I do want to mention at the start, I am running the ESG mod. This adds a lot of nice balance changes to the game, and I would highly recommend that you use it in your games. Now, for the actual game settings. At the start, you're going to want to change a few things in the uh, advanced settings. The first one is the instantaneous animation speed. This is added in the community patch. This makes it so that your travel times and your probes won't take extra time in your games. It really speeds the game time up. Another important thing is to turn off academy quests and the behemoth unlock quests. This one is very important. It allows people to get the behemoth tech without having to wait for other people to get the military techs as it is in the base game, which is very annoying. As for victory conditions, I like to turn off Conquest and Wonder, because these are very easily abusable and it leads to longer games. Now, for the galaxy settings, these are going to be the most important. The main ones is the galaxy shape. Typically, I like to use Ovoid. This sort of keeps people closer together and prevents a very, very long, annoying star lens that can be very difficult for people to explore early in the game. Another important change is the number of constellations. Setting this on many will ensure that every single faction starts on their own unconnected star lane from another empire. Now, what this does is it prevents rusher factions like the Cravers or the Nakali from spawning right next to you and just rushing you down. Instead, they're going to have to discover technology like wormholes or get baryonic shielding and use free movement to find you with probes. So I like to keep this on. It also gives you more bonuses for getting other uh, uh, nodes, for getting other uh, constellations as they're called, because getting a full constellation will give you a 15% bonus to a particular yield, which can be very nice. Now, let's get on to the game. In this game, I am playing as the Riftborn. This is because the Riftborn, while they are simple to learn, like the United Empire and the Sophons, they have a few quirky game mechanics that make them much more fun to play than the normal factions. Now, in my games, the first thing I like to do is you can just send your colony ship out in whatever direction you want to explore. Now, in this case, I have no choice, so I'll just send my guys over this way, and he found nothing. Now, the first thing I like to do after that is assign my hero to my starting ship, and then retrofit him. In this case, he can accept a few probes, but what you want to check is the movement of your starting ship. Now this has a movement of six, which means on my hero here, oops, I'm going to want to put another engine instead of another probe. Because if I put another probe here, I would only have three uh, movement, while my exploration ship has six, which means my whole movement would be slowed down. So let's keep them on here and apply it. Now, you can explore the curiosities in your capital. Nice. That one's not very good. I mean, I suppose I know where they are now, but whatever. All right, that looks like it's everything on my capital, which is very nice. Now, the Riftborn are sort of the opposite of other factions. They like sterile planets, primarily ash planets. Ash, lava, and deserts are very nice for them. This is because they do not like life and actually get more happiness from sterile planets than uh, planets that have life on them. At the start of the game, you're going to usually want to queue up uh, drone networks and then immediately start researching xenolinguistics. Xenolinguistics is probably the best technology in the game because of this building right here, the Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. This actually gives uh, a lot of production, more than people typically think. The main thing to know is that it gives 10 production per planet, so regardless of the planet type, you're going to get 10 production flat right at the start, plus these other bonuses. Another thing to look at at the start of the game is your laws. For most factions, you're not going to want to do anything. In this case, I'm not going to be doing anything here. Another important thing to look at is hacking. Now, at the start of the game, you're typically going to, get, going to want to drop an encryption node right in your capital. This will make it so you don't have to remember to do this later in case somebody finds you and starts hacking you. Typically, you won't find somebody to hack right at the start of the game. In this case, uh, because I found my minor population here, I'm going to be hacking them. So, in order to bring up the hacking console, you press space. And to hack, you click on your starting system, and then you drag to the system you want to hack. Just like that. And 
we can send him down here as well, which will take another turn. One thing to note about movement is if you use your probes, it will actually lower your movement. So because I use my probes, I can't move now, so he's going to be unable to All right, looks like we got that technology. Now, the next uh, important technology is going to be this. This is because of this right here. This allows you to do diplomacy with uh, minor factions right here. So even though I'm hacking them, I can't actually praise or do anything with them. It says missing the technology. And you're always going to want to get these guys. Now, the main reason you're going to want to get these guys um, through assimilation and not war is because when you assimilate them you actually get their trait and that's this trait right here and as you can see this is basically a free minus 10 percent ship production depending on which minor faction you get it can easily win you a game another important button to know is this button right here this will commit all movements of your ships you're going to use at the beginning of every single turn All right, our first faction quest. Now for the Riftborn, basically the point of these is if you choose this, not only get this reward, it will also increase the um, the political party of this, which is the industrialist in this case, which you're really gonna wanna use as the Riftborn. So I'm gonna pick Strengthen. And then we can queue up this and this. And then I like to go right into colonizing. Now let's see where Savannah is on here. Oops. Right here. Perfect. So we're probably going to get this one next as well. For most factions, it is very important that once you have this building, you immediately start colonizing. That is because this will give you bonus production per planet, plus these other bonuses. So this can easily get you double the production at the start of the game. Now what that means is, because I researched one technology here, it unlocks the next tier. And that's how you unlock the next technology tiers, is once you get one here, it unlocks this. Once you get two here, it'll unlock this. Once you get three here, it'll unlock this. And not only does it give you access to research these technologies, what it also does is it opens up these things in the middle. So if you want to know how you get the Hyperion Engine, you have to enter tier three, which means you have to research two techs from tier two. It also unlocks new probes right here, lets you see curiosities. Um, there are many different useful things here. Mostly the weapons are up here. Over here you can get like new laws or new probes and all sorts of crazy stuff. And here we've arrived. Now finding curiosities for minor uh, populations actually increases their approval with you, which is very nice. The Rift one here, I typically like to make him a governor, and this is pretty much the best skill in the whole game, right here, bonus production. You're always going to want to take that. And our hacks completed. Alright, so, you're going to want to improve image usually. Now what that's going to do is increase this bar right here. The faster you can assimilate these guys, the better, because it's basically a free system. Ooh, that's not very lucky. Oh, hey. Oh, well, never mind then. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a unique planet. It's a very good one, but it is just a single planet, so it's basically useless. That's unlucky. You hate to see it. Wow. This is not looking to be a very good start, that's for sure. Maybe I'll get lucky here. Oh, and I got very lucky. All right, perfect. So as you can see, this is a five planet system. This is basically the best uh, system type in the game that you can get, which is five planets. It's the max size. These are must-have systems. If you see this, you need to get them. So let's see where we can colonize here. Okay, good. Typically, I don't like to choose the ones that give you a random technology, because if it gives you something bad, it's actually going to hurt you. Ethereum. Okay, that's not very nice. What's this? Cyberflora. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll have to wait till next turn to start colonizing anyways, so... Let's get our next 
next research. Let's see, what else do we need? Now we, ha we have that technology, so now we can start colonizing this. So I'm actually going to prioritize this over that one, and then go for this. This is basically the same tech as the industry one, except instead it gives you science, which is very important to get early on. As for technologies, hmm, let's see. Well, I don't have a luxury yet, so... This is a tough one. Now, what I'm trying to decide is what I want to prioritize first here. Basically, this is a very important step in the game because this is my only system here. So I will need to find somewhere to expand to. Now, I already have Baryonic Shielding, which means I can do free movement. But what I'm looking to do is discover new areas nearby. So that means that anywhere around here, I'm going to be sending out probes looking for new things. So I need to get some text that will help me do that. Now the main thing, let's see. I'll probably just end up going for the tier two modernization here. So I'm just gonna get the two best texts from this tree, which is multi-thread management and galactic commodities. Okay, hacking. So what that means is basically, if you're hacking a minor faction, they will actually send a counter trace once they detect you. Same thing for pirates. And since we've reached this threshold, once you go over this bar, you can then assist them. Okay, research curiosities. Alright, that's the easiest one. Now we can colonize. Now, in this case, I think it's actually better to go for the small planet. That's because it gives slightly more food and also some science. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we should... Eh, it's actually not worth it to speed it up in this case because it's only six turns, so we'll leave that alone. Continue improving image. And hack again. Cyberfloor. Wow, there's a lot of cyberfloor here. So in this case, it actually would have been better to colonize this system, but it's not really a big deal. Oh, and the pirates are right here. Unlucky pirates, one system. Now, another thing to notice about this system that makes it so good is this right here, Jadonix. Now this is probably the best luxury resource in the game. We are going to want to have this as our system improvement. So the next tech I'm going to be looking to get is the one that allows me to colorize Mediterranean. Which is this technology right here, which I will get after this. Oh, and here we go, elections. Now, typically with the Riftborn, you're going to want to take the industrialists. This is because the industrialists give the Riftborn the most benefit. At the early part of the game, I would recommend lobbying. This actually gives you a bigger bonus to a party that's already ahead, which the industrialists will, as you can see from the survey. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Okay, as for this quest, this quest will start every single game. You're always going to want to choose this one because the scavenged ram scoop is basically extra movement, which is very nice. Let's see if we get some of the team. This is like our god system. We need to get this up and running as soon as possible. And now that there are no more curiosities to research here, I'm actually going to send my hero back to the capital. Now, because we're looking to explore, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to change, first I'm going to change my colonizer and give it some movement speed. This is going to be your standard design for the Riftborn colonizer. As for the scouts, the Riftborn actually have a very nice scout. It has a lot of extra modules, so you can add two movement speed, make them quite quick. As for weapons, typically uh, torpedoes are going to be the best bet early on. And again, I usually like to prioritize uh, getting science that I choose, not something at random. If you really want to go RNG, you can. I 
I would not take anything that gives you food as the Riftborn, because you do not want to have more of these stupid apiece this minor factions. And now that we're completed, we can actually build our first compression singularity. You're basically going to be building these whenever you can and putting them on your most important systems whenever you can at possible. So I'm also going to build a few uh, scout ships here. Nothing yet. There we go, that's how you apply it. Let's see, I'll probably make a few more of these things. Oh, one thing I forgot actually. One law that you're always going to want to pass as the Riftborn is the Beachhead Bylaw. This actually makes your outposts go faster. Now, since the outposts didn't actually complete yet, we're still going to get the main bonus, which is the bonus production. Look, one turn. So what I'm doing here is I'm sending probes out. I'm trying to see another unconnected system. As this is our main uh, lane, the only way this will connect to anything else is through wormholes, which we don't have yet. So the, next, the, the main way we can find things is by shooting out probes randomly. So let's see what we can find. Now the next thing I'm going to worry about early game is uh, getting some behemoths out, which can really improve our production. So I'm going to get that and adaptive bureaucracies for the Dinark University. These are two very important techs that will improve a lot of stuff early on. I'll probably get the spin project as well here. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Joe Networks, Xeno Industrial, Cerebral, and then we can go for the Ash, the Lava, and this one. Actually, I'm going to prioritize this one first because it has the Judonics, which we need very badly. See, we're nearly at maximum improved image, so what I'm actually going to do here is hack the economy. And you'll notice, after I do this, our dust production goes up. That's because when you are the suzerain of a minor uh, faction, improving your economy improves these numbers over here, which actually improves your numbers. Oh, and here we go. I found something. So now I can send my shadow over here automatically. Once you have your second colony up, it's always a good idea to encrypt that one as well. You have free bandwidth, so why not? Alright, let's see. What's next? The main thing with the Riftborn early on is you're going to want to start fabricating your uh, population as soon as you possibly can. Getting these population out is going is the main way you're going to be able to improve your economy. So I'm just going to start spamming them out now. The Riftborn have sort of an opposite building curve than other factions. Most other factions are going to want to queue up all these basic buildings at the start. The Riftborn don't really care. They're going to want to get they're going to want to get a lot of population first because if you don't have the population, having all these buildings isn't really going to help you. Got this select my technology. Hmm, let's see here. We'll get to the military for now. It won't matter, my capitals are gonna be very uh, busy at the start of the game anyways. It's a minor faction right there. Nice. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for unconnected nodes around my capital. Sometimes you can find random systems out here in the fog of war. Oh, and my singularity ran out. Unfortunate. Wow, I have a lot of science in this. Important text for dealing with pirates. Yeah, I know. I know. Look up. 
important decks for dealing with pirates are going to be uh, this one right here, Titanium A2S Slugs. This will allow you to siege them down very quickly. Also this one. This one basically will double the amount of ships that you're allowed to have under one fleet. It also gives you access to cloaking, which can be useful for scouting, as well as uh, tanks for your ground fleet, which is basically you're going to switch to all tanks as soon as possible. This is because, if you look right here, um, tanks by default do 50% bonus damage against infantry. So if people have any infantry, you're going to be winning. So as soon as you can switch to tanks, you're going to be on equal footing with everybody else. Oh, uh oh. Let's see what these guys have. Lasers? I think I can win this. Let's see what happens. Now one thing to note about these uh, starting cards is, so here we have uh, my exploration ship. Now as you noticed earlier, I put missiles on these, which means these have a very, very high damage at long range. So what, that, what this uh, overall range accuracy means at the bottom here in the uh, left hand corner, this is actually the, per like, the percentage chance that that missile is going to hit, which correlates to how much damage they do. So at long range, they're going to be doing their maximum damage. Now these other ships, they want to be at medium range. So these guys are probably going to choose a medium battle plan, which would look something like this, take trophies. So they might take a version of that. Which means at the start of battle, I'm actually going to be at my optimal range. Well, they are going to be at their 50% range, giving me an advantage. So let's go ahead and take that. And I won. Losing one shot in the process, but that's not too bad. So it looks like a pirate or something hacking me, so I'm gonna shut that down. Oh, he found something over here, perfect. Let me send out a few more probes over just to make sure, and then we can head over here. And look, there's another one right over here that's unconnected. case we're not going to want to pass another law. And now we wait for these population to finish. Hmm. These two techs you're usually going to want to ignore as they're born because they give food, which are quite bad. running low on influence here, so probably what I'm going to be doing is start spinning in this system. Now I'm going to pick this system because it already has full population, so I get the most bang for my buck. here is because there's no wormhole connecting me, I can't actually hack down here. That's a big problem people sometimes have. Oh, there's a faction down here. The Maris Sometimes it's hard to tell your interesting. Oh, there we go. That was the faction quest right there. 
So now I have this system as mine. And so since you get these two free ships, you can actually use these to start pacifying the pirates. However, they will probably die quite quickly. We can build up here. Get Ash, and Toxic, and these. And those also count for this law, the Beachhead Bylaw. This actually works for getting uh, systems to invasion or through your quest right there. So the, yeah, there you go, ecstatic, perfect. And on this system, I'm actually gonna start queuing up uh, this, uh, and then a bunch of population. So let's let's go, let's kind of spam those out there. Uh, now, these guys have actually started a cull in here. So what I'm going to do to deny them that is start uh, uh, guarding the system. This actually will uh, allow me to kill their outpost, which will die. Actually, what I'm going to do is this. Don't forget to encrypt. So what this means, if you get that notification, that means that your hack is being traced. Typically, you're not going to want to hack from one system to another. Because they're pirates, they don't have a, an encryption, so they won't be able to detect you. Uh oh And these pirates are going to love me. But it looks like that outpost is destroyed just in the nick of time, so that's good. And we've arrived. Let's see. Let's see. Still not enough Jadonics. Maybe I can buy some in the marketplace. Not enough. I'll go ahead and buy this though for now. Typically in the other game, I like to sell uh, as many bonus luxuries as I can because they give you bonus dust for dust inflation starts. Right now, all my techs that I'm researching are going to be used for later. Right now, I really can't use them for anything. Also, when you're building these singularities, try and do them in unimportant systems. Because they always take one turn to complete, no matter how much industry you have. See what I got. Ah, perfect. You're under dust. And now that my pirate ships are here, I can begin the invasion. Let's see, what do we need? Now, since in a few moments I'm probably gonna start spamming colonizer ships down here and down here, I'm gonna go ahead and get this for now. Probably as well as this one. Also, don't forget, once you get tanks. Convert your entire, uh, convert all your uh, troops to tanks and upgrade it at least once. Welcome, welcome. How can Whenever you can do that action, it always annoys people. I'm actually going to build another uh, exploration ship here. I'm actually making a mistake. I'm not putting these uh, singularities down, but it's not really a big deal. Perfect. Always go for industry first, if possible. When doing this quest, always separate your fleet, because if it kills um, your fleet, it'll only kill one of these ships here. 
think I got lucky. I think we can sell this thing because it's useless. Heroes and trade routes. Those are all very, very good techs. Oh, here we are. So, what do they have? It looks like they're using missiles as well. Interesting. Okay, let me click here. There you go. Honeycomb. I'm almost fully completed on this system. I'm going to recall my ships over here and help them deal with the pirates. And, as you can guess, the next thing to do here is spam a bunch of Riftborn. Let's see, can I get my thing yet? I can, perfect. So, ideally you want to do this a few, few turns before, but... Um, it took me a while to get that other uh, colony up and running. So the next thing I want to do is slap that right in our capital. Hmm. Well, these systems aren't very big. Horatio. In this situation, I'm literally going to use this uh, ship as a scout. Oh, did you see that? Okay. So, what we just got was a, a much better laser technology. These lasers are actually very good. The only issue is that they cost uh, lug uh, strategics, which are not very useful to take early on. Maybe when you build a military later, um, I can go over some other strategies for that. Ships might be dead. <laughs> Always luxuries or strategic, sorry. And we got our faction quest. Now, this is a very important one. Now, what you should notice is the kill gives you plus five with your major faction. This gives you a hero. And this gives you plus with non major. Basically, with the Riftborn, you're always going to want to have a bunch of major population. And this will give you a shit ton of approval. So I always take this one. What do these have? Mediums? These are the exact same ships. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. It's a luck of the draw. And unlucky. When you see this, it means you have one too many uh, population queued up to take one out and then it can finish. This node is not looking very good.
Now what that means is you actually get a, a collection bonus for having a certain number of population, which is why I'm building all those population. Because this is actually much better than if you are building a bunch of crappy buildings with no population. So with the Riftborn, it's actually much more beneficial to build a bunch of population on new colonies and at the start of the game than building a bunch of new, uh, new buildings and letting uh, your, your uh, minor faction population grow. The pirates are coming. And I'm almost finished here. Be a while here. And a while here as well. <laughs> here we go again. You do whatever you can to keep the industrialists in power. They are so good. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I was converted. Well, that's unfortunate. <sighs> and we can pick a sign. Here, here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. This is really good. Bean counter and this one. Nice. Yeah, so obviously this hero. And we're going to want to assign him to Lanika. A lot of pirates here. Interesting, that's pretty good. sucks a bunch of three planet systems <sighs> typically I don't like to go for that good thing you can still keep this lob in fact in this position right now because we're not making any new colonies abolishing this law would actually save us a lot of uh, influence here so for now I'm gonna pass no laws actually you know what because we're so happy we probably could pass this. Let's see. Yes, very nice. That's free dust right there. And then once this completes, um, the first thing we're probably going to do... a few of these first. Probably the first thing I want to do is build um, the Denark. Where is he? Here we go. That'll give us a... Look at that. Take one turn to build that. Get that. We'll get the cube. We'll get... Um, we'll start spinning on all our systems right now, actually, as well. After that. And then we'll get this. This. Yeah, that looks good. think my scouts here can beat these pirates so we're looking at a sort of bad situation oh there's a green faction down here maybe I can find them so I'm actually start have to building ships here soon in order to fight these pirates I can tell you, I'm not colonizing this system, that's for sure. I 
Look how fast that is. Science. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now we have this tech. We can actually build this next too, and that'll give us even more uh, production. That'll, what this is doing, this will actually give us um, more uh, strategic resources on our capital here. Now, I'm actually going to stop the video right here because we've covered a lot of the early game. In the next one, I'm going to go over attacking these pirates once our capital system is up and running. It'll be only a few turns before it's ready to go and start pumping out ships. These are our statistics. It's looking very nice. So I'll see you in the next video.